Modern Australia is a land of reptiles. Crocodiles, snakes, lizards, turtles, and even dinosaurs inhabit almost every corner of this southern continent. But aside from the semi-aquatic crocodilians, none of these reptiles are truly massive, with the largest lizard living in Australia today being dwarfed by the Komodo dragon, an animal living 2,500 kilometers away on the island of Komodo. However, just over 50,000 years ago, the Australian mainland would have borne witness to a reptile that would dwarf the modern-day Komodo dragon. At nearly 20 feet in length from head to tail, this animal was the single largest lizard to ever walk on land in the history of life on Earth. In fact, this monster reptile stalking the outback would have been the apex predator of Australia, ruling over the land down under as one of, if not the last great reptilian predator on any continent. A relic of a bygone era, science knows it as Varanus priscus, however we know it as Megalania, Australia's monster dragon. The first fossils of this giant reptile were discovered in 1859 west of Moreton Bay in eastern Australia and described by the famous paleontologist Sir Richard Owen. Owen subsequently named it Megalania priscus in that same year, classifying it as its own distinct genus. The name Megalania was chosen as a reference to the terrestrial nature of the great saurian using the Greek word megas, great, and a modification of the Greek word eleno, meaning I roam, giving the genus name meaning great roamer. It is also worth noting that the word eleno has a close similarity to the Latin word lania, the feminine form of butcher. However, the two words are not actually related and this has subsequently led to numerous mistranslations of the name as giant butcher. As for the species name, Owen would assign it the Latin word Prisca, meaning ancient, though this was later changed to Priscus, giving us the full name meaning ancient great Romer. However, this would all change in 1888 when paleontologist Richard Lidecker synonymized Megalania with the genus of Varanus. The same genus that currently encompasses all living monitor lizards, including animals such as the Komodo dragon. Interestingly, in 2004, paleontologist Ralph Molnar noted that even if every species of the genus Varanus were divided into groups currently designated as subgenera, Megalania would still be classified in the genus Varanus. However, Molnar also noted that Megalania is still suitable as a common name rather than a scientific name for the animal known as Varanus priscus, meaning that Megalania is one of the few extinct animals that actually does have a common name in addition to its scientific name as most extant animals do. As for the fossils themselves, the fossils discovered in 1859 consisted of just three vertebrae, and subsequent findings would also be incomplete, featuring just a few more vertebrae, isolated teeth, lower jawbones, as well as limb bones, with a complete skeleton or even an intact skull having yet to actually be discovered, with most of said fossils having been discovered near and around Australia's eastern or southeastern coast. Additionally, a humerus, or upper arm bone, possibly belonging to a younger individual, was found at the Naracorte Caves in South Australia, though this has yet to be confirmed as to actually belong to Megalania. Based on the fossil evidence, it is readily apparent that Varanus priscus was the largest terrestrial lizard of all time, and easily the largest fully terrestrial Cenozoic carnivore in Australia ever discovered. However, due to sparse remains, exact size estimates are extremely hard to make. Early length estimates of this reptile were based on the largest individual discovered, which was originally thought to have been around 7 meters or 23 feet in length, with a maximum weight of 600 to 620 kilograms, or 1,300 to 1,370 pounds. However, in 2002, paleontologist Stephen Rowe presented a new estimate that greatly downsized this massive lizard, proposing that Megalania had an average length of just 3.5 meters or 11 feet, and a maximum of 4.5 meters or 15 feet. 
For weight, Rowe proposed that megalania would have an average weight of around 97 to 158 kilograms or 215 to 348 pounds and a maximum of 331 kilograms or 730 pounds. Despite this, in 2009, Rowe and other paleontologists would go on to re-raise the maximum estimate to 5.5 meters or 18 feet in length and 575 kilograms or 1,208 pounds. If correct, this would place megalania at roughly twice the size of the modern day Komodo dragon. Megalania belongs to a carnivorous and frugivorous family of lizards known as Varanidae. This family includes the living genus Varanus, commonly known as true monitors, which includes animals such as the Komodo dragon, crocodile monitor, savannah monitor, goannas, and of course, Megalania itself as Varanus priscus. The family's closest living relatives are the earless monitor lizard and the Chinese crocodile lizard, Lanthanatidae, which is a sister group to Varanidae. All species in the genus Varanus are found in Africa, Asia, and the Australasian realm. Varanus is believed to have originated in South Asia in the Miocene Epoch. However, the anatomy among its earliest members is thought to resemble the modern-day group in India that includes the subgenus Empagusia, such as the Bengal monitor. The group then spread out in two directions in the Old World, such as the subgenera Polydaedalus moving toward West Asia and Africa, along with the Indo-Australian group, including the subgenera Haptosaurus, Odotria, Papusaurus, Salamonosaurus, and Varanus moving into Southeast Asia. That was until 15 million years ago when a land bridge formed connecting Indochina and Australia, which allowed the ancient reptiles to enter Oceania. This is when the true monitors evolved into bigger sizes, such as the early Komodo dragons and, of course, Megalania. As studies were made to establish the phylogenetic relationship of Megalania, an affinity with the Parenti, Australia's largest living lizard, has been suggested based on the skull roof morphology. Another study has proposed the Komodo dragon is a sister taxon to Megalania, based on neurocranial similarities, with the lace monitor or Parenti possibly being its closest living relative. As for the entire family, Varanus are well known for their huge sizes, but what distinguishes them from other monitors is their unique way of killing prey. Some would usually bite and thrash their prey, while some, such as the Komodo dragon, are equipped with venom and would bite their prey and wait for them to succumb to the effects of the venom. Varanus also use their long whip-like tails as a defense, along with having well-developed ventricular septum allowing their hearts to temporarily function like a four-chambered heart, which in turn ensures that the oxygenated blood is quickly distributed to the body without also flooding the lungs with high-pressure blood. The highly efficient circulatory system and robust legs allow true monitors to become powerful sprinters, making the Parenti the fastest of all monitors. With all of the family's features, Megalania would have had most of them, such as using its tail for defense, a powerful bite with potential venom, as well as being a good sprinter, though not necessarily as fast as other Varanids. With all of these features that Megalania has, it is not hard to see how it became one of the top predators when it evolved in Australia. As mentioned previously, Megalania, being a Varanid closely related to the Komodo dragon, was possibly venomous. In fact, many of its close relatives are too, being from the group of lizards called Toxicophera, which includes all reptile clades possessing toxin-secreting oral glands. In fact, Toxicophera actually includes all living and extinct snakes, which is where their venom comes from. Additionally, Toxicophera also includes within it the massive aquatic lizards known as Mosasaurs. Closely related Varanids use a potent venom in glands inside the jaw called a hematoxin. Hematoxin acts as an anticoagulant, increasing the prey's blood from the bite by preventing coagulation of the blood. This is similar to how Komodo dragons hunt their prey using their venom to take down larger prey such as deer and buffalo. Megalania would have potentially done the same in order to take down prey, including larger ones than itself, as its smaller modern-day relatives currently do. Interestingly, what is potentially the oldest record of fossils from Megalania are reported to be found in the Zanclean aged Pliocene rocks of the Chinchilla Sand Formation, meaning that Megalania could have potentially lived as far back as the end of the Neogene period, although the 1918 publication that described the material aren't considered in high regard. Putting the potential Pliocene remains aside, the earliest Pleistocene Megalania fossils date back to the Jabanian stage of the Pleistocene Epoch. And during that time, sea levels fell due to a vast amount of water being stored in the high Arctic and Antarctic regions, creating a temporary land bridge between Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. This would later lead to the birth of the last ice age. The climate during that time was cycling rapidly in Australia, with ice house phases creating both temperate and arid conditions. The flora at this time were well suited to dry conditions, but the environment constantly changed as a result of rapid change in seasons. This included forests, grasslands, and deserts. The flora itself during Megalania's time was almost, if not, no different than today, consisting of plants like the famous eucalyptus, various kinds of pine trees, horsetails, ferns, grasses, and other flowering and non-flowering plants. 
Megalania was one of three apex predators present in its environment, believed to have lived in the open forest, woodlands, and grasslands. And it would have preyed on various different types of megafauna living in its environment during that time. Looking at the closest relatives of Megalania, such as lizards like the lace monitor, we can see that these animals are adapted to swim and climb trees. Going off their lifestyle, and as is evident from young Komodo dragons, it's entirely possible that young Megalania would have been capable of climbing trees for protection and prey on whatever is or was adapted for arboreal lifestyles, such as the likes of the genus Pseudamis, common bushtail possums, and quolls on rare occasion. Young Megalania would have likely remained arboreal until they were big enough to defend themselves and hunt larger prey items, such as bandicoots, smaller extinct and extant kangaroos like the modern day red and eastern grey kangaroos, extinct koala relatives, thylacines, emus, goannas, and young crocodilians. The Parenti, another close relative of Megalania, are known to be the fastest of monitor lizards. They have a high amount of stamina, which enables them to chase down prey for a very long time. This makes them endurance hunters. Comparing their stamina to Megalania, however, Megalania would have likely been slower due to their size and heavy build. Because of this, it's considered Megalania would have been an ambush predator, waiting for the prey to come close enough for the predator to strike, where the animal would also attempt to chase down their prey, as the venom does the work, as seen in Komodo dragons. As they grow older, Megalania would have gotten large enough to tackle Australia's biggest megafauna and compete with other large apex predators that also inhabited its environment. Adult Megalania hunted prey like large kangaroos such as Protemnodon, as well as the short-faced Procoptodon, the giant wombats Fascolanus and Cetaphilascomys, the completely extinct Diprotodons like Diprotodon itself and Uoenia, and the giant Dromornithid bird Geniornis. While Megalania was indeed the largest predator in its ecosystem, they still would have had to compete with quite a few predators throughout their lives. Young Megalania competed with the giant two-foot-long skink, Chilicula frongens, and would have likely had to worry about larger predators like the famous marsupial lion, Thylacoleo, the giant Wanambi, one of the last matsoid snakes, as well as crocodilians like Paludurex, the modern saltwater crocodile, and the terrestrial Quincana, all of which would have served as competition for adults. Thylacoleo and Quincana in particular, despite hunting the same prey and competing for the same food, were still dwarfed in size by the adult Megalanias and more than likely back down from their kill depending on the size of the individual. Additionally, Megalania, like most monitor lizards, were likely solitary hunters, competing with their own kind for territory, mates, and most importantly, food. However, the biggest threat to Megalania and to the other predators it competed with were early humans. Early humans began to migrate in Australia during the unnamed late Pleistocene stage, competing for the same food they preyed on. This then may have led to humans outcompeting the giant lizard later on. Overall, Megalania would have been at the top of its food chain, chasing down prey twice or nearly triple the size, and going head to head with some of Australia's other giant predators. Megalania has actually appeared in quite a lot of media since its discovery, making its first appearance in the 2001 docufilm titled Mega Predators. Later, in 2003, it appeared in the documentary series Monsters We Met, where, in Season 1, Episode 2 of The Burning, it encountered the first human explorers. In the same year, the giant lizard made an appearance in the two-hour-long documentary titled Giant Monsters, which aired on Animal Planet. It then appeared in the 2008 documentary titled Death of the Megabeasts, which discussed what killed the Australian megafauna. Next year, in 2009, Megalania appeared in the short six-part documentary series titled Monsters Resurrected, which had an episode dedicated to Varanus Perseus titled Giant Ripper. In 2010, a two-part documentary was shown on the Discovery Channel titled Prehistoric Assassins, where Megalania appeared in episode two of Claws and Jaws. Megalania then made an appearance in the 2012 documentary Australia, The Time Traveler's Guide. Then in 2013, it appeared briefly in yet another documentary series, Australia's First Four Billion Years, in the episode titled Strange Creatures. Afterwards, in 2015, Megalania made a brief appearance in the documentary Top 10 Biggest Beasts Ever. Six years later, in 2021, Megalania would appear in the TV series La Brea, where it was shown briefly in a cave about to attack the main crew. Its latest documentary appearance was in 2024, making an appearance in Megafauna What Killed Australia's Giants. Megalania was also shown in a great amount of video games, starting with the 2012 mobile app Jurassic Park Builder being featured as a limited time creature in the Cenozoic Park. 
Five years later, Varanus Priscus can be found in the 2015 open world survival game Ark Survival Evolved, being a tameable creature found deep inside of caves. Later, Megalania would be a playable creature in yet another open world survival game in 2017, that being Path of Titans. In 2021, Megalania was featured in Dinosaur Park Primeval Zoo, being featured as a premium creature in the forest biome. It would also appear in Ark Survival Ascended in 2023, then later the same year, Jurassic World Alive would go on to feature Megalania as one of the new Omega-class creatures. Lastly, Megalania is due to make an appearance in the game The Isle, as concept art was made for it, though as to when exactly it will be added into the game is not known at the moment. As it stands now, Megalania has an incredibly rich history in the modern pop culture landscape and is sure to continue being featured even more as the years go on. Megalania was one of the top predators of Australia during its time, and little would have been able to compete with it, let alone defend itself against it. Occupying a similar niche to the modern-day Komodo dragon, but on a far larger scale, it has well earned its reputation as Australia's greatest apex predator since the extinction of the dinosaurs. Unfortunately, like almost all of Australia's other megafauna that lived with it, just 50,000 years ago, the giant lizard disappeared from this world forever. As to what exactly caused the extinction of Varanus Priscus, there are many plausible theories and explanations that may be able to explain this. Though, the most agreed upon explanation, however, is that, as with so many other megafauna of recent prehistory, the arrival of humans is what took out this great predator. It is estimated that the first humans arrived in Australia around 56,000 years ago, give or take around 4,000 years. Megalania then stops appearing in the fossil record at around 50,000 years ago, and along with it, most of the other Australian megafauna. From this, it can be concluded that the arrival of humans may have directly led to the demise of Megalania, as what was once Australia's top predator now had to contend with a far more efficient predator in Homo sapiens. It is likely that Homo sapiens was competing with Megalania for the exact same food sources and, in the process, driving those large megafaunal prey items into extinction as well. This competitional imbalance combined with the extinction of the prey items being competed for may have been the primary driving factor in the extinction of Varanus Priscus, leading to its eventual demise after having ruled Australia for nearly 1.5 million years. However, while the giant lizard did end up going extinct, it has certainly not been forgotten, as confrontations between early humans and Megalania are believed to have inspired tales of monstrous creatures in Australian Aboriginal mythology, such as the frog-faced reptilian known as the Wowie. Additionally, while the species Varanus priscus has gone extinct, the genus Varanus still survives today as the largest living lizards, with the top 7 out of the 10 largest lizards alive today all residing in the genus that Megalania once hailed from. And while there are no 20 foot long lizards alive anywhere on earth today, animals such as the Komodo dragon still provide us a glimpse of the ancient past when giant reptiles walked the lands down under. Giants such as Megalania. Australia's Monster Dragon. Thank you all so much for watching our video on the giant lizard Varanus priscus, otherwise known as Megalania. We've been looking forward to making a video on this animal since the beginning of this channel and we are stoked to finally release it to you all. Today's video was directed and narrated by myself, The Primal Earth. It was scripted by Mike MC9797, Spino Dragon 145, Crimson Acro, and myself. It was edited by Mike MC9797, Crimson Acro, Legit Eliminator, and myself. The graphic designer for this video was The Dinosaur Hunter, and the research team for this video was Mike MC9797, Crimson Acro, and Spino Dragon 145. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, comment down below suggestions for future videos, and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when those videos come out. This has been Epoch Now, and we will see all of you in the next video.